thank you for having me. Uh, good morning, everyone, wherever you are. <laughs> it's all the time uh, horizon. So my name is Truso Asafa with Tampa Bay Water. My group uh, does system decision support modeling and, and supporting our mission, among others, is climate-related uh, activities. Um, I'm also currently the chair of Florida Water Climate and Alliance. So in the last two days, you learn about decision-making under uncertainty, some case studies. But what I'm going to tie today is how do you actually make this happen? Uh, and I'm going to talk about the example of the Florida Water Climate Alliance, what drove us um, what are the questions we were raising when we get together? Um, and then how do we sustain this uh, uh, continuous uh, interaction uh, between scientists and, and stakeholders? So I, will be, I won't be showing you a whole lot of uh, how to do, rather the process of doing things that uh, you heard the last couple of days. Um, Tampe Water, uh, my company is a water supply uh, planner, uh, providers, you can see we are on the bay and come back, there's a reason I, I spotlight there, so right on the ocean, uh, we provide water for three uh, counties and three cities, and our uh, demand varies close to 100, 250, um, and, and then also the multi-decadal uh, uh, climate impact. Uh, one of the things is interesting, as you can imagine, everybody, one of the uncertainties for us uh, is everybody wants to come into Florida. Great place to live, that this is in our backyard, beach, and uh, believe it or not, more than 300,000 people live, uh, move to Florida every, every year. Uh, so this is beyond the other uncertainty, probably even deeper. Um, this is uh, when I, the first time I came, this is a, a, a causeway. I was driving from Tampa uh, Airport to Clearwater. Uh, this is a trail, but the road is in your left side. Um, you know, this 19 years ago I came, I said, hey, uh, maybe I will stay here four or five years and I like to do research, go back to universities and do some things. The rest is history. So whoever comes here, even for a vacation, they stay. So that's why we have tremendous amount of uncertainty on demand growing. Um, COVID didn't help us. Uh, so one of the trends we have seen, this is deep, deep uncertainty. Who knew COVID would shuffle uh, water utilities demand, uh, people moving in. So what we found for the last uh, two uh, years, three years, is given that people could work remote, we have seen explosion of population coming into our region. Um, Hurricanes. Uh, this is an example. Uh, you can see this is Hurricane Maria, uh, right, passing through Puerto Rico. <clears throat> Some of the study shows that hundreds of uh, thousands of people moved to Florida, a whole lot of them close to uh, Orlando, but we got our own uh, uh, share as well. So these are how hurricanes and storms shuffle up in the future is a big uncertainty as well. Uh, for us, before I get to supply kind of deep uncertainty, I'll come from the demand side. And demand is driven by uh, economy, the recessions. Uh, so one of the things we have uh, looking at is that how does this shift for our area? I know in some areas, uh, even within WUCA, some of the demands are going down. Uh, but for us, it's the opposite. It's, it's been explosive. Um, a recession has been a very good indicator for demand. And this is interesting. This is since 2017 to 2014, we're looking at the recession is here, recession is here. And this is interesting from Forbes. Uh, they said nine out of 10, the last recession came with a Republican uh, government in, ha uh, in the office and they were expected. Well, recession was not there. Uh, bank rate came up with when is the next recession? Um, not yet. Uh, I like this one from New York Times. It said recession uh, will come eventually. So we have to be prepared eventually. And, and one of the things they said is even economists don't know when is that next recession. So demand side variability for us, to couple that with, with uh, supply is a huge one. So what you can see is actually in the past, recession used to be a good indicator for uh, unemployment for recession. And the only time happen is uh, you guessed it, uh, COVID time. So you have this kind of unemployment, but the, we didn't get the, that recession as well. So we have to juggle um, economic uncertainty 
and supply uh, climate variability. So we end up developing a range of scenarios. This is an example that uh, we use in our model. We generate uh, a range of scenarios. You can see here in, in uh, green, the high demand we can expect somewhere in the middle. Uh, and then you have, uh, so this is a thousand scenarios we, we use to uh, for in infrastructure planning uh, and so on. Supply side, uh, we have quite a bit of uncertainty. So we have a very highly seasonal uh, flows. You can see that we get about 60% uh, of our rain within two to three months of summer. This is typical for Florida, a little bit even uh, Southeast as well. So what does it mean? So any change in the variability, any change in the amount, any change on the start of the uh, wet season is going to impact us. We don't have a whole lot of storage here. Uh, we don't have over year storage like most of you probably from the waste you have. So our storage are very, very uh, small in a way that we fill it up summer in three, four months, and then we use it for the, the next uh, uh, eight, uh, eight months. So understanding climate, understand the variability and how all this translate into uh, hydrology uh, is, is very important for us. Uh, another thing is that this is, this is one of my favorite uh, uh, graph. It shows you annual rainfall we get in floor, in our area, and then the percentage that end up being ET, evapotranspiration. So what's interesting here is in fact, in a dry year, when we get about uh, 35 inch, 90% uh, of that uh, water uh, rainfall end up being ET. Uh, it's only when we get quite a bit of water uh, or the rain, uh, we get, uh, you know, probably close to uh, 55. So on average, about 70% of the rain end up, end up being uh, evapotranspiration. So an, a, a degree Celsius increase, you can imagine how much that impact. And some of the research we have done with our collaborators is looking at how does this change in temperature impact the, the entire mass balance of the hydrology, as well as shifting uh, the flow that we get. So what, so what do we do? So we did initiate uh, close to 27, uh, 2007, 2008 with the University of Florida Water Institute, um, looking at this. Um, and then we initially, we, we said, hey, why don't we do it in-house? So we put a PhD student, a postdoctoral student, and we actually develop our own MM5 uh, the models. But we quickly learned that that was not satisfactory. So we, we said, hey, let's leave the climate modeling to climate to the climate scientists. And that's how we end up bringing other climate scientists from uh, the state uh, as well, which I will come back in a minute. Um, then we formed the Florida Water Climate Alliance. So this is uh, kind of uh, mirroring WCAT by now you all know, uh, but when we start engaging then we said, hey, uh, Florida has quite a bit of uh, unique um, climate um, and hydrology and so on. So we should uh, bring uh, a state level that, that that's really um, looking at the local uh, processes that you normally may not get it if you look at a GCM projection for the entire state, for example. Well, just before forming that, we joined uh, WUCA, so you know who uh, who are the WUCA members and so on, the last two, two days, so I'll not repeat. So this is basically what uh, initiated the Florida Climate Alliance after we did. So we started 2000, uh, we joined 2009 WUCA, we started 2010, the Florida Water and Climate Alliance. We are on our 13 strong years and with quite a bit of um, engagement. And I'm gonna explain what are those engagement, how do you sustain that? Um, so Florida Climate Alliance is a stakeholder science partnership. Uh, our, this is actually our mission. You can look at in our, uh, as well, uh, other information on our website. This is a training um, which we are doing today, these three days. You, when you all are doing online, this is what we were doing uh, before COVID in person. In fact, this is what you see the picture on the top is when we uh, organized uh, with WUCA and Florida Climate Alliance here at Tampa Bay Water Facility. Uh, the last figure here is interesting for me. And one of the thing it really sets up for us, why do we need to do things at the Florida level is that especially going back to you know, 2010, 2013, most of the climate models, they were coming up at two degrees. 
um, uh, we live here. Um, and you can see some models has to assume you are in a water or you are on a, on a land. Um, and then this ocean, uh, ocean uh, land, uh, atmospheric interaction, and those models at the global scale could not reproduce what we see. If you do a dynamical downscaling or some other method to look at the fine grid, this is what you get. So this is, in fact, we, we, we show it. That's one of the reasons that we decided to have. So who are we? <clears throat> So this is a, um, a group that we came, like I said earlier, 2010. Um, so we have different management districts. If you are not aware, Florida has uh, five big management districts who oversees um, some of the regulation. I see some of the presentation from South Florida, for example, um, that, that they, they cover this entire region. So we are here. Um, and then we started at the beginning with a couple of grants from NOAA SARP. Now, I don't think it exists. Um, in between, that's for three years or so. Um, so we kept that. Uh, in between, when we don't get a fund, we were chipping in. So basically, uh, the members would, would, would sustain. So this was a, a co-foundation of uh, the institute between Tampa Bay Water and the uh, University of Florida. Uh, we are on our last grant of NASA this year, um, so we'll look for more funding. Otherwise, we'll keep still um, putting it together. So the way it works is we have a steering committee. So what we do is there is a continuous iterative uh, loop uh, in terms of understanding. So as you can see, there are practitioners from water utilities like me uh, from Tampa Bay Water and Danielle is from Peace River. Uh, people work with for uh, management districts. Uh, Carolina, you can see here with South uh, Florida management districts. We have Tom from St. John's. And then we have the, the scientists as well. Vasu is our climate scientist. Uh, Tracy, I will, I will mention also, she's a, a communication specialist as well. She has some study, I will come back to that. And Wendy Graham as a, a hydrologist, hydrologist. So basically what we have is this core team uh, would plan, and we used to have two to three in-person uh, meeting before COVID, but now we are, we are doing it online, very successful. In fact, we get more than 250 uh, registration every time. And at least uh, we have an attendance of uh, north of 150. So this is not just Florida. Now it's explored to uh, to the United States level as well as even abroad. Once we put it in uh, the in terms of there are two articles that I want to give you a reference. Uh, this was when we celebrate our ten years. Um, we published on a cover published in uh, Bulletin of American Met Meteorological Society. Uh, here it shows you uh, a little bit of what I said and even more. Why, what was the driver? So if you want to know more about that, you can refer uh, on that one. Recently, we also had a, uh, a listening session, something like this as well, uh, getting input from our um, uh, participant and we pushed out. So this is another um, article that you may want to, to check. So what's, one of the things when we started we were posing because of this continuous interaction, we were posing, uh, posing a lot of questions. And some of them, I just put a couple of them here um, that you said, hey, um, the hypothesis is landfall tropical cyclones tends to balance uh, the water uh, shortage or drought in South East. This is a common myth actually, uh, because people think Florida gets a lot of water because of the cyclones and so on. So we posed to um, our partners here, uh, Vasu, the, uh, they studied, in fact, what they found was uh, looking at 28 uh, weather sheds in the southeastern, um, the contribution of uh, cyclones, tropical storms for overall water budget is insignificant. So you may get uh, you know, one year, but consistently we are not getting. So these are questions that we raised. Um, in, in this during in, um, uh, interaction for over a decade. 
Um, an example is that when we started, this is 2010, we say, hey, we want to use the uh, climate models. And then uh, there are models that are used in the West, other, other parts of the US. We found out they are not really uh, working good for us. Uh, so this is just a typical example. Uh, and I will come back. This is from our 2013 studies. Uh, we use an existing downscaling uh, methods for, for Florida. And you can see observation is here. Um, that's what we are getting from others. We end up developing our own uh, uh, stochastic downscaling methods through these interactions, through uh, uh, that one. In fact, this was an example for WUCA. If you haven't, <clears throat> since I didn't hear, uh, participate in all of them, maybe this was mentioned. There is a great report from WUCA that shows a co-production, and there was four utilities as an example, uh, including uh, Portland, uh, Seattle, uh, New York, and Tampa Bay. So in that Tampa Bay case study, we dem we showed that uh, things we can do uh, with uh, locally and also with in part in, in uh, participation with um, other institutions. So what I'm going to do is I'm done. So to just give you a flavor of some of the research, some of the work we have done, just in a chronological order, uh, we continue to do that. So for example, starting 2001, that's where we put our own uh, climate model. Uh, you can see there are the number of other studies after that with bias correction, um, assessing those. So all these are published through, uh, the, most of them through Floria WCA interaction, like I mentioned. Um, these are examples that you can find, uh, including Florida level uh, studies, for example, uh, climate change. This is actually a nice book from Florida Climate uh, institute that they produced is, uh, I suggest that as well. Um, other studies we did looking at uh, how climate uh, models output works uh, and, and how do they uh, uh, manifest and how, how, how can we use them in our area as well. Um, uh, the, the, the paper that I mentioned is here that uh, shows the entire history of uh, Florida WCA. Uh, yeah, so these are some of the studies we, we have done. Um, I, I just want to say that uh, we have Tampa Bay Water especially has been doing this for over a decade. Uh, we typically uh, finance uh, doctoral students, postdoctoral students, and a big picture when you think about it and from, I'm talking about from utility uh, revenue and how, what percentage of it you spend on uh, research and development and implementation. Very minute, but uh, the return investment is huge. So I'm really a fan of uh, utilities uh, collaborating and then creating um, this kind of relationship uh, over the years. And then you, some of them I'm showing you, showing you here only those related with climate. We have other uh, projects where we put students, uh, some of them at the pilot level, and then we implement uh, in-house. That's. All I have, unless there's a question. Thank you.